Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our Nagoya Bonske review episode. Uh, before we get into the actual Bonske review, I do need to point out this is the first ever episode where not only am I going through the Bonske, I am also going to be monitoring my daughter on the baby monitor in case she wakes up and needs attention as my wife is currently on a walk. So right now, we're, we're looking good. It's hard to see, but she, she's sleeping there in that uh, muddle of stuffed animals and blankets. So right now we're good. But if there are some weird editing jumps, it's because my baby is no longer good. I won't be editing it at all. <laughs> okay, I, I have a, I'll I have just my, be 30-minute uh, breaks of Jake sitting there twiddling his thumbs, oh, eagerly no, no, anticipating my return. Yeah. I'll be practicing my stand-up routine, but... There you go. I don't know how useful the practice will be without an audience, but <laughs> it's okay. We'll get there somehow. Yeah. Probably get just as much reaction as if I was actually sitting here. Yep, probably. (laughs) So before we actually break down this Bonds K, we want to uh, let everybody know that we have started a new bi-monthly newsletter on all things Sumo. It is called American Sumo. Uh, You can check that out at grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. Jake, what can they find in American Sumo? Well, this first one was a bit of a trial run, um, but we got some help from a handful of people around the amateur sumo community. Uh, There's a lot more amateur stuff to report on, I guess I'll say, uh, quantity-wise, than there is pro stuff uh, between between the months. So our our intention is to release this every month that isn't a Basho month. Uh, We will be doing, like... Here's a write-up on what happened at the Bosch show. Here's the other um, amateur tournaments that have happened in the meantime. Here's a bunch of club resources, event resources, like where to go if you want to actually try sumo or learn about sumo. It's just something that isn't hasn't been out there for a while, um, especially being able to track when are amateur tournaments happening in the U.S. That is something that has just notoriously been fluid <laughs> i'll say <laughs> and how to actually find when they're happening so we, we uh figured like it's something that the it's something that people would find useful and it's something that uh is fun to make so uh there will be a pdf like yeah this first one is like 10 pages uh i learned if you want to do hard copies you should probably keep it to multiples of four pages <laughs> um but you know we live and we learn but either way uh, <laughs> we're gonna be coming out with that every even numbered month uh, and we would love any feedback or if you want to contribute art or if you want to take a stab at writing, uh, we'd love to talk to you and, you know, have, have other people than me do more of the work because that would be easier for me. And that's what I care about the most. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's been fun. We, we put together like a format. We did, uh, the 2022 nationals. Uh, we did uh, the Natsubasho, the Cowboy Cup that I went down to Texas to help with. And there's a preview for the World Games that are coming up in a couple weeks. So, yeah, some fun stuff in there and even more stuff next time. Yep. So the next issue of that will be coming out in August and it will be better than ever. Uh, the next thing kind of want to advertise. So I realize we've been doing these Bonske episodes for a couple of years now. And I mentioned I play guest the Bonske and I'm like, hey, you should play along. I've never told people that are interested how to actually do that. Uh, so I'm going to try to emphasize that a little bit more because it's a fun game and it's fun having the interaction with the people online talking about their guesses, my guesses and all that stuff. Uh, so if you go to www.dichnedickney.com, I think it's German. It's spelled D-I-C-H-N-E.com. Uh, there will be a uh, tab on the side where you can hit GTB. That'll get you to the Guess the Bonds K game. Honestly, the easiest way is probably Google Guess the Bonds K and click on the top link. No, I like dickney.com. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. You might have a better idea. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> You're more worldly than I am. Uh, yeah, I'm worldly enough to not like take a stab at it without knowing what language it comes from. <laughs> German. That's my guess. Maybe somebody that knows will hear this and tell me. 
Yeah, we're going to stick with Dickney. Uh, so go to www.dickney.com <laughs> and hit GTB. That'll take you to the link to guess the Bonds K. And I just want to shout out some of the people we've been interacting with. Obviously, Leonard from the Tachi I blog. He is currently ranked number four on guess the Bonds K. Uh, I've been having some interactions with Kaito on Twitter. He is currently number two on guess the Bonds K. And also we've been getting some emails from Dolores Clem, number six on guess the Bonds K. Uh, our old friend, Tim Sumo, he has been participating in this recently as well. Uh, Asset is somebody that's recently been uh, talking to us about the Bonske. Just the past couple of Bonske, they this is their second attempt, and they were number 10 in the standings for this past Basho. And our first uh, free T-shirt winner, Sandre the Giant, he tried his hand at guessing the Bonske for the first time this Basho. Uh, so I want to hear from everybody who's playing Guess the Bonske uh, so that you can tell me what you're doing and I can learn from you and I can get even better. This is really all just selfish for me to absorb your knowledge and get even better at the game. Where, where are you ranked currently, by the way? Or is I am. That? Eh, it doesn't need to be saved. I am number five as it currently stands in the overall standings. Yeah. And... That is also what my ranking was for this past prediction. So I was number five out of 155 submissions. Nice. You're also the fifth best member of the Grand Sumo Breakdown podcast. <laughs> Thanks. Exactly. It, <laughs> it's, it all, it all comes together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, one last thing before we dive into the details. If you are listening to this on a podcast app, uh, maybe check this one out on YouTube. See what, uh, see what you think. We're trying our hand at a little bit of actual video. Effort? Effort, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not just like (laughs) click, drag, zoom onto YouTube. (laughs) Yeah, it's no longer copy and paste of our Zoom video. There's a little bit more effort going on in there. Uh, So check that out. In particular, once we get into it, I'll switch to a different view where you can you can see Ryan's whole Bonds K prediction compared to the actual Bonds K uh, as we go through it. So that'll be that'll be easier to follow. And because we're doing it in OBS, I don't even have to learn anything about video editing. I just click the (laughs) record button and switch between my scenes that I made. Yeah. And, and once we get into this a little bit more, we'll get a camera set up. So that's always watching Riley's baby monitor. Cause it's always just fun watching a baby uh, in their sleep. Cause she's so cute. Yeah. It's we got the two cameras set up right now, but yeah, obviously it's going to be a three camera. So yeah, Yeah. we'll eventually get one for uh, Riley and then every pet. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll hire the wives to just follow the pets around and record them, and we'll have them going on in the YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Obviously, yeah. that's where it's going. So let's finally uh, review this Bonds K. Starting at the top, of course, your Yokozuna is Terano Fuji. Ozeki, we're just going to have a hey, reshuffle. Do, do a quick uh, transition sound effect for me, Ryan. <sighs> yeah, how cool is that? I don't know. I didn't uh, yeah, see the right, transition. Right. <laughs> But you, hey, everybody on YouTube, comment on how cool that was. Yes, please do. <laughs> just just give me your honest praise. <laughs> so like I said, now that we're fully transitioned to the correct screen, <laughs> your Yokozuna is Terra no Fuji, obviously. At Ozeki, it's just going to be a reshuffle based on their previous records. Takakesho having the best of three not great Ozeki records will be your top rank Ozeki at Ozeki 1 East. Uh, Mitakayumi will be Ozeki 1 West and Shodai will be pulling up the rear Ozeki 2 West. At Sekiwake, Wakatakakage will remain the top Sekiwake after his 9-6 and six record. This will be his third straight Basho as a Sekiwake and then joining him on the west side of the Sekiwake ranks is Daisho, who replaces Abi after Abi had a seven and eight record from Sekiwake last Basho. Uh, this is going to be Daisho's second Basho as a Sekiwake, his first since Aki of 2020. Uh, it doesn't really feel like it's been almost two years since he was up there, but I guess that is the case. It also doesn't feel like 2020 was two whole years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that was weird. We canceled the Basho back then. That feels like way long ago. Uh, back when we were young. <laughs> and had the effort to simulate a Basho. Oh, man. Can you imagine putting in that time now? No, I have a baby now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's increasingly becoming more and more toddler-like and throwing far more tantrums uh, than I would like her to. <laughs> I hear that tends to happen. <laughs> That's what I heard as well. I was hoping it wouldn't be the case, but damn it, it happened. At Komosubi. 
Hoshoryu. He will be your East Komosubi. His eight and seven record, not good enough to force open a third Sekiwake slot. So he will be Komosubi for the third straight Basho. And this is where Abi drops after his seven and eight record. He will be Komosubi West. Uh, once again, after his seven and eight record from Sekiwake. And that is where the Komosubi rank ends. There was a lot of chatter, speculation. We had guys like Kiribayama, 10 and five record from Maegashira 2, Takanosho with an 11 and four record from Maegashira 4. You had Ichinojo who sat out due to COVID taking up one of the Maegashira 1 spots. So a lot of people thinking that eh, maybe now is the time to create new Komosubi ranks. These guys deserve it. The Bonske committee did not see it that way. We just have the two Komosubi, which means we will have some form of utter chaos in the upper Maegashira ranks as Rikshi with 10 plus wins will be left waiting to join the Sanyaku for at least one more Basho. Um, I do need to drag Tim Sumo's name through the mud. Uh, he was somebody for his request right (laughs) yeah yeah this one was weird there's multiple people like hey i think this is gonna happen i don't actually think it's gonna happen but be mean to me on the podcast (laughs) (laughs) i i don't think tim subo was necessarily there he he uh he know he i don't think he thought komosubi extra komosubi slots were going to happen he just kind of he makes his bonds case based on how he would make it which is probably a far more healthier way to play guess the bonds oh, game mentally healthy yeah i see what yeah. you mean yeah yeah I, I, uh, I mean i would i would agree with you but at the same time the the comeback of like talk mean to me podcast daddy like i don't know if, <laughs> i think that more than cancels it out <laughs> maybe that's less mentally healthy <laughs> well we'll get, we'll get to uh some uh daddy mentions a little bit later now that you mention it oh you'll see uh but jake i do i do I need to I mention <laughs> We're going to have to. Uh, Tim Sumo also called you uh, the lovable dimwit on these episodes. How how do you feel about that? How difficult it is to set up these (laughs) nice, beautiful screen transitions on. uh... (laughs) (laughs) I I don't know. I guess I'll have to live with lovable, but. Yeah, Okay. I'm over. (laughs) (laughs) So let's let's move on to Maegashira 1. Um, on the east side, we do have Kiri Bayama. Uh, he is going to be one of our snub of the Bonds K candidates. Uh, he, he's going to be top of the list uh, for feeling snubbed at this point. He has had two straight Basho with 10 and 5 records in the joy and has advanced only three ranks uh, back in... Haru, he was ranked Maegashira 4, had a 10 and 5 record. Natsu, Maegashira 2, had a 10 and 5 record. And he's ultimately going to end up at Maegashira 1. That Don't know if that's happened in history. I'll have to go back and check that out. But if it has happened, not very often. And then we have at Maegashira 1 West, uh, this this is one of the spots that was open to a lot of speculation. This is where Ichi Nojo uh, was ranked for the Natsu Basho. He had to sit out due to COVID. Uh, there had been no history in the Makauchi division of any Rikshi in the top division being demoted after sitting out due to COVID. Uh, but that is until now, as Takanosho does take that Maegashira 1 West rank. Um, so he becomes the second of 19 Maegashira 4 Rikshi in history to uh, not make it to the Sanyaku ranks after an 11 4 record. So the first 17 Maegashira 4 Rikshi that had 11 4 records all made it to the Sanyaku ranks, some even creating new Komosubi slots to get in there. But the last two who have gotten that rank and record combination did only made it to Maegashira 1. How, how far back was that other that other one? Like 2021, 2020, it was Hokuto Fuji. Okay, super recent. Got it. Yeah. Yep. And so Takanosho, also a snub of the Bonske candidate. Maegashira 2, we're going to go on to our third straight snub of the Bonske candidate with Koto Nowaka. He is another one feeling the burn of this crowded joy, crowded Sanyaku, where these people at the top are the top Rikshi. They're really not falling down and opening up any slots for anybody below them. Everybody's just kind of ranked right where they belong on this Bonske right now, with the exception of possibly Shodai. Um, But that's a discussion for another time. So 
Kota Nawaka becomes one of a handful of Rikshi in the six Basho per year era to not rise any numerical ranks after a nine and six record as a Maegashira. Uh, Cause he's only sliding over from Maegashira to West to Maegashira to East. So four of those in history were Rikshi that moved over from Maegashira one West to Maegashira one East after nine and six records, as there were no open Sanyaku slots for them to take after their nine and six record. And then the other one was a Maegashira 11, which is really strange if you kind of look at it it's on the surface level. It's like there should never be a spot where Maegashira 11 is butting up against something where he can't get promoted. Uh, but this was Chio Taidu in Kyushu of 2019. Uh, he was ranked Maegashira 11 West. And in Hatsu 2020, he was ranked Maegashira 11 East. So this was that weird Basho where we transitioned from Kyushu 2019 to having 11 Sanyaku Rikshi to just having eight Sanyaku Rikshi the following Basho. So despite the fact that Chio Taidu only went up a half rank, he was actually ranked ahead of four more people in the actual order. So it just it's kind of hidden in the... Uh, numerical rank because there were ranks eliminated in front of him so it makes it seem like he didn't go up the bots hey when in reality basically had the uh, equivalent of a two rank promotion okay i feel less angry about it now yeah so koto nawaka is the first migashira two that this has happened to and the sixth rich Rikshi in history that it's happened to uh going on to migashira two west we have our fourth straight snub of the bonds k candidate we have ichi nojo landing at migashira two west dropping one rank after sitting out due to covid uh we we expected that to happen but he's still the first guy to drop due to uh sitting out because of covid and so we're we're gonna throw him a snub of the bonds k candidacy here uh kind of keeps the trend of doing it for all these top guys uh going <laughs> didn't that happen like in jurio a couple times but not here in the top division correct it happened in jurio back in hatsu 2021 this is the first time it has happened in the top division yeah uh and so this is another one of those cases where uh somebody is raising their hand Ooh. This might be wrong. Be mean to me if it's not wrong. Uh, so Baravesio, you absolute moron. How could you ever think Ichi Nojo was going to remain at the Magashira 1 West rank just because every single past Makauchi Rikchi that sat out due to COVID didn't go down at all? You got to look at the context of these things. That's what I always say. You utter imbecile. I can't believe you listened to the show. Please stop. I never want to hear from you again. Uh, thank you for your comments on Twitter. We look forward to all of our fan interaction. We we yeah, greatly appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Bear Vesio, uh, once again, apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. You're French, so I probably am. Um, he, he's one of our last uh, T-shirt winners as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say, how do you know that for sure? Oh, that's right, because we had to mail them something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm sure they appreciate the reminder. That they yeah. were indeed French. He he uh, specifically requested. He said, "I was like, I'm not sure that you're wrong, but either you are, and it will be fun for you to recognize me for being right, or uh, even better, you can Rod Lunsford me." <laughs> 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 to which Rod Lunsford said, "It's not as fun as you think it will be." <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations, Rod Lunsford. You've become a verb. <laughs> We verbed him. <laughs> Patreon great Rod Lunsford. Oh, thanks for uh, listening, Rod. We do appreciate yeah, you. We, we also very much love you and cherish every interaction we can have. <laughs> I look forward to reading your email and responding to it in a couple of days. Bonds guy stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. are we on? My Gashira three on the east side, we have our fifth straight snub of the Bonds guy candidate. That is okay, Tamawashi. <laughs> I can but I won't because that's the last one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Tamawashi is is joining that same handful of Rikshi that Koto Nawaka just did for having a nine and six record and not increasing your numerical rate. So it has now happened seven times. Uh, and it is, I did the math. I found every time that a Maegashira got a nine and six record uh, from 1958 on when we had six Basho per year. And so it happens 0.47% of the time you get a nine and six record as a Maegashira. You will not 
uh, increase your ranking. So, so one out of 200, and it happened twice this time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. So Tamawashi slides over from the west side of the Maegashira 3 rank to the east side. And then we get to Maegashira 3 west. We have Ura landing here. He's going to be rising three ranks after a 9-6 and six record from Maegashira 6. Um, I will point out for anybody that is interested, all of these spots on the Bonske I have uh, – correctly predicted so far from my prediction yeah i was gonna say that the part of like and i was this many ranks off has been completely absent so far that's right because i haven't been any ranks off so far but we do get to the Magashira four rank where i do have uh my first couple of misses also um wanted to point this out at the top of the episode uh the last one was like over an hour long because i had so many different diatribes that i needed to yeah. get into uh luckily since i got so much right now that we're past like the Komosubi stuff and like the historically small uh, promotions that some people got, we're going to fly through my Gashira ranks like four through 14. We're going to finish this up in like two minutes and then like <laughs> our producer will be off screen like stress. Yeah. <laughs> so our my Gashira producer is my cat. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, who else? You don't need to say that. Everybody knows already, Jake. I, I was dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, Mike Shear 4, east side. We have Wakamoto Haru. He will be at his career high rank. And on the west side, we have Takayasu. He is falling three ranks from Mike Shear 1. Uh, so, this is the first of a couple of crackpot theories uh, that I had supported with spotty, coincidental, at best evidence uh, that was kind of busted by this Bonske. So, my theory that I used here was that a higher ranked Rikshi would not be given an over demotion in favor of promoting a lower ranked. Rikshi. So that's why I, in my prediction, I had Takayasu at Magashira 4 East because if he had been ranked Magashira 4 West, he would have been over demoted by a half rank in favor of the lower ranked Wakamoto Haru, who by virtue of his better record, deserved to be ranked ahead of Takayasu. Um, so that was not the case because obviously Wakamoto Haru ended up ahead of Takayasu uh, and Wakamoto Haru rises up two ranks after his third consecutive nine and six record to start his Makuuchi career. Fair enough. So Magashira five. So I missed each of those guys. I just had them swapped east and west. So a uh, total of two misses there so far my Gashira five on the east side we have endo falling one rank after a seven and eight record from my Gashira four and we have sada noumi rising seven ranks after an 11 and four record from my Gashira 12 at my Gashira six on the east side we have aoyama rising five ranks after his 10 and five record from my Gashira 11 and we have toby zaru falling one rank after a seven and eight record from my Gashira five my Gashira seven okino umi rises three ranks after a nine and six record from my Gashira 10. I will point out those last five guys slotted in just exactly perfectly on the bonds. Okay. They rose up the correct number that you would expect them to based on the math. Endo was previously on the East side, still on the East side. Sadanumi was on the West side, still on the West side, just absolutely lined up amazingly perfectly. There's no second guessing or anything on that section of the bonds. Okay. It, that's absolutely what it was always going to be. Uh, Maegashira 7 on the west side. Hokuto Fuji falls four ranks after a 5-10 and 10 record for Maegashira 3. Maegashira 8 on the east side. Tochi Noshin rises one rank after his 8-7 and seven record for Maegashira 9. And on the west side, we have Nishikigi rising two ranks after an 8-7 and seven record for Maegashira 10. Uh, at Maegashira 9 on the east side, we have Shima Naomi falling one rank after a 7-8 and eight record for Maegashira 8. Now, I only had him falling a half rank to Maegashira 8 west. He and Nishikigi both deserve to be the same numerical rank and were the two contenders for the Maegashira 8 West spot. Uh, Shima Naomi had previously been on the east side and Nishikigi was on the west side. Uh, so I assumed Shima Naomi would get the tiebreaker due to having previously been on the east side and otherwise being tied for that spot. But they either went with Nishikigi because he had a better record than Shima Naomi, or they just wanted Shima Naomi to drop a full numerical rank after his losing record. Either way, I was wrong. And so these are my next two misses on the prediction. Each of those guys just missing by one spot. And then at Magashira 9 West, we have Kotoweko dropping two ranks after a 6-9 and nine record from Magashira 7. 
Then we get to Magashira 10. We have Chio Taidu uh, and Mese both rising three ranks after eight and seven records for Magashira 13. Chio Taidu remains on the east side and Mese remains on the west side. Uh, this wasn't an overly lucky Bonske at all, I would say. And so just by virtue of these guys rising to extra ranks uh, than they deserve based on their eight and seven records. I'm going to make them both luck of the bonds. K candidates, very weak field for luck of the yeah, bonds. K. Uh, and then we have at my Gashira 11, we have Koto Shoho uh, dropping two ranks after a six and nine record from my Gashira nine. Um, so this is, uh, where our friend Asset comes into the picture. Uh, they have just recently kind of started chiming in on our Bonds K predictions. So last time they had said, oh, these couple of things are going to happen. You're wrong about these. And one of them I was right about, one of them they were right about. The same exact thing happened this time. Uh, so they the were... Two are on equal footings as far as Bonds K experts. Not so fast. So <laughs> they correctly predicted Nishkigi would be ahead of Shimano Umi to allow Shimano Umi to drop a full numerical rank. But they also said Koto Shoho would be ahead of Meisei for reasons is basically what they gave me. They didn't give me any reasoning whatsoever. They just said, oh, Koto Shoho would be ahead of Meisei, which did not happen. And I did not predict to happen. So their argument for their wrong answer was worse than my argument for my wrong answer. <laughs> so I'm going to say that I win this round. Or we're, we're just going to, we're going to nudge that a little bit in favor of Ryan for that argument. Obviously. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. And I was pretty sure it was asset that had said, something about here it is um so they well okay i guess we'll get to it uh later on in the bonds k not to that rank uh, yet. uh we'll Keep we'll uh leave the the daddy stuff till the end of the bonds k <laughs> <laughs> oh let's hope we finish the episode before ryan gets to that <laughs> no i will make it happen okay, uh okay and then Magashira 11 on the west side, we have Midori Fuji uh, rising up five ranks after a nine and six record for Magashira 16. Uh, so Midori Fuji, he's getting a two rank over promotion. So I'm going to make him a luck of the Bonske candidate as well. It also looks really good for him when you compare it to Koto Nawaka and Tamawashi. Uh, Midori Fuji gets a five rank promotion for a nine and six record. Koto Nawaka and Tamawashi get a half rank promotion for the exact same record. We all know why it happened because, uh, but it's still kind of funny when you take a look at it in a vacuum. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Magashira 12 on the east side. Teretsuyoshi falls four ranks after a 5-10 and 10 record from Magashira 8. And Takara Fuji falls five ranks after a 4-11 and 11 record from Magashira 7. Uh, Takara Fuji was a guy where... I could have argued like Ichi Yamamoto or Chiyo Shoma deserved to go in the spot he went to um, ahead of him because they both had better records than Takato Fuji. Um, and I kind of said on the preview episode, but I'm not going to follow that logic. I'm just going to go with him because he was the highest ranked out of these three. Except I don't need to follow. If the Bonske committee doesn't have to follow one train of logic for an entire Bonske, neither do I. Well, it worked out for me here, as that's as that's the spot where Takato Fuji went. Yeah, no, that, all right, fair enough. <laughs> it, it could also be that Takato Fuji was previously ranked on the east side, while the other two were previously ranked on the west side. But that doesn't line up with what we saw with like Takayasu and Wakamoto Haru. Mm -hmm. Takayasu was previously on the east side, had a worse record than Wakamoto Haru. Uh, Wakamoto Haru was ranked on. Well, Wakamoto Haru deserved to be one rank ahead of Takayasu, so I guess that's not You're quite the same. Get back into the weeds, man. Come back out. <laughs> all right. Let's We'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll come out. Yeah, uh, it, I only get tangled up, and I'm going to stay down there. So I appreciate you throwing <laughs> me that lifeline. Uh, we I promised a more trim felt episode, so <laughs> it's okay. We, Nobody believed you. <laughs> we will move on. Uh, Magashira 13 on the east side, you have Ichi Yamamoto. Uh, this will be a career high ranking for Ichi Yamamoto as he rises two ranks after an eight and seven record for Magashira 15. And on the west side, we have Chiyo Shoma falling two ranks after a six and nine record from Magashira 11. 
Maigashira 14. On the east side, Miyugiryu falls two ranks after a 6-9 and nine record for Maigashira 12. And on the west side, we have Tsudu Gisho. So Tsudu Gisho is our first Jurio promotee. He's rising five ranks from Jurio 2. And one of my crackpot theories seems to be holding water uh, given the results in this Bonds K. So my theory was Jurio Rikshi need to deserve to be ranked two ranks ahead of a Makauchi Rikshi in order to be ranked ahe- ahead of them. And that held 100% true uh, for this Basho. So Tsudu Gisho uh, deserved to be ranked ahead of Miyugiryu on the final Bonske, but he only deserved to be ranked ahead of Miyugiryu by one rank. Mm-hmm. And so as we see, Miyugiryu is ahead of Tsudu Gisho. And then the next person that Tsudu Gisho, the next person we would place if we're ignoring Tsudu Gisho would be Onosho. Tsudu Gisho deserved to be two ranks ahead of Onosho. And we have yet to see Ono Show. So right now it looks like the sweet spot for figuring out where Jurio promotees go. They've got to deserve to be numerically ranked ahead of somebody by two ranks in order to be ranked ahead of that Makauchi Rikshi. Um, Because as we're about to see at Magashira 15 East, that is where Ono Show lands. He's dropping 10 spots to Magashira 15. and He's getting the Ishiura treatment that we saw last time. So, it's eerily similar, these two guys. Um, both of them were ranked Maigashira 5. Uh, they Each of them only got two wins. Each of them pulled out of the Basho uh, for multiple days due to injury. Um, each one was passed in the rankings by a Jurio 2 Rikshi that had a 10-5 and five record. And both of them dropped, I think, farther than most people uh, would have predicted. I... I Definitely Ishiura dropped farther than most people would have predicted. Um, I think a lot of people, at least the people I talked to, thought I had Ono Show a little too far down in the rankings. Mm, I got him exactly right. Uh, I know uh, Kaito, uh, the number two guy on Guess the Bonske, thought I had Ono Show a little too far down. And I think Leonard had Ono Show a little bit higher up in his prediction so as well. It. We'll get to that. <laughs> oh, don't worry. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a whole thing for this later. <laughs> The uh, come. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, Onosho is my last perfect prediction. Uh, so up to this point, my gosh, you're 15 East. I only missed four Rikshi uh, from the exact perfect placement. And all of them I had off by only a half a uh, numerical rank. Uh, from this point forward, I don't get any more perfect predictions. And um, my second crackpot theory uh getting blown up is what is to blame for that uh so at my 15 west uh we have oho uh he is going to be another one of my luck luck of the boss candidates he's only dropping one rank after a six and nine record for my 14 that's a two rank under promotion for him like i said pretty weak field for luck of the boss this basho uh so he is a candidate for that Magashira 16 on the east side, we have Yutakayama dropping two ranks after a six and nine record from Magashira 14. And then we have Dayamami rising seven ranks after an 11 and four record from Jurio 6, uh, taking the Magashira 16 west spot. So this is a, another case where uh, Dayamami deserved to be ranked ahead of Oho and Yutakayama. Uh, but since he was coming from Jurio, he did not jump them because he only deserved to be one rank ahead of Oho and Yutakeyama. So as I predicted, they were underneath uh, Oho and Yutakeyama. Uh, I just had somebody else also ahead of Daimami that didn't end up happening. Uh, this also proves that playoff matches, at least down in Jurio, have no bearing on your ranking the next Basho. Daimami was ranked Jurio 6 East, and Nishiki Fuji, who we'll be seeing ranked at Magashira 17 East, uh, also was, had an 11-4 record from Jurio 6 West. Both of those guys tied for the Yusho lead with 11-4 and four records. Uh, the lower-ranked Nishiki Fuji won the Jurio playoff to take the Yusho. Despite that extra match and win over Dayamami, I think Nishiki Fuji was 2-0 and against Dayamami, this Basho. It was not enough to boost Nishiki Fuji past Dayamami in the rankings. So this shows that that playoff has no bearing on the rankings whatsoever. It's just what happens in those 15 days. Yeah, so the Jurio Yusho itself has no value. Correct. It's just the number of wins during regulation that has value. 
Correct. Yep. Huh. Sorry, got to let my cat out. The first baby break? Oh, okay, just the cat. No, baby's fine. Honestly, I wasn't worried about it at all. Baby sleeps through the night with no issue. We. It's and the saddest. need a monitor, Ryan? Things happen. She's still a baby. <laughs> You know, she it, might we start a gang or something. <laughs> about a month, month and a half ago, she was really having issues when we would lay her down to go to sleep. We'd lay her down instantly; she'd pop up and she'd be screaming her head off, and we'd have to go up there and console her and like read her books or something to get her to lay down. And we we're just like, don't know what happened. Like she was doing so good for so long. I don't know why she's suddenly having this issue. And then I'm always the one that lays her down at night. And then my wife. Uh, laid her down either for a nap or uh, just to go to bed one night and Riley didn't have any issues going to sleep and I asked her what what did you do she's like oh well I just gave her like a hug and kiss laid her down she got backed up I want, asked her if she wanted another hug and kiss so I gave it to her and she laid back down she was fine it's like hmm, I never give her extra hugs and kisses so the next night I, I don't want to spoil her I, I lay <laughs> <laughs> I I go to lay her down to bed, give her like my customary like hug and kiss, and then very business like, she... like I'm sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> proper transaction. <laughs> Here's your I have your one my hug upon you tonight, my child. And yes, our business. In return, you will fall asleep and you will not awaken until seven a.m. the following morning. <laughs> as is our as is our agreement, <laughs> as per our contract <laughs> agreement, <laughs> which you have heretofore signed <laughs> with your uh, baby paw print. Mm. Paw print. God, I am. Such a terrible father. You've had cats and dogs longer than babies. So I can't blame you. That's a good point. But yeah, and so I, I asked her, I was like, do you want one more hug and kiss? And she's like, mm-hmm. So she stands up, give her one more hug and kiss, lays down, goes to sleep. We've been doing that ever since. I haven't had any issues. Literally, the only thing my baby wanted to go to sleep was love, and we couldn't figure it out for two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> well, she's already gotten her requisite <laughs> hug, kiss, and yeah. handshake. So, like, what's... I'm not going to go above and beyond the contract unless I'm getting something back in return. Turns out what I'm getting back in return is uh, not having to spend an extra half an hour to put her to sleep. It's a solid payment. (laughs) Yeah, we we agreed on some uh, changes to the contract. We've gotten that worked out, and it's been working fairly well. Like I said, though, she's a toddler. She's getting grumpier. That's probably going to change pretty soon. (laughs) (laughs) Mike, she is 17. On the east side, we have Nishiki Fuji. This is going to be a career high rank for him as it is his Makuuchi debut. Our only Rikshi making their Makuuchi debut this Basho. He's rising six ranks after his 11 4 record from Jurio 6. And it's actually a very interesting thing with Nishiki Fuji. Him I'll joining the Maku. Back. Him joining the Makauchi division was leaked prior to the Bonske release. So there was a picture taken in the Isekahama Beya, and obviously he's a member of Isekahama Beya, and it showed his name like on the board along with the other Makauchi Rikshi in their division, Terano Fuji, Takata Fuji, uh, Teretsu Yoshi. I guess I didn't I, – I had things tied up. I didn't realize that was before the Bonske came out or something. Yeah, it was actually uh, our friend Asset that uh, noted that to me. I had missed that going through all the news. Uh, but yeah, the, I, uh, Isekahama is like head of the Shimpan department. I'm pretty sure Shimpan department's putting together the Bonske. So Isekahama had a little bit of inside information and just kind of nudged uh, Nishiki Fuji's name ahead on the board a little bit before he should have. So I want. I wonder if any kind of internal discipline that nobody will ever hear about will come out of that, or if they really just don't care. Hey, don't don't do that again, Ryan. What did I do? No, him. That's like his. Discipline. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just stop. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so Jake, I know you've been dying for daddy updates. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, In so the back of my mind, I'm like, oh man, when is this callback gonna happen? <laughs> Uh, th- this is what proves that I truly am superior to Asset, uh, this uh, Bonske. So Asset said not, that they... You're not superior. What are you? You're his Bonske <laughs> daddy. <laughs> it's not me who's Bonske daddy. Let me let me read the tweet. Uh, Asset says, also, I think Oho and Yutakiyama will be Maegashira 17, and Dayamami and Nishiki Fuji will be Maegashira 16. Uh, he was wrong on that. Oho and Yutakiyama were ahead of them. Can't wait to be wrong and get called out by Daddy Jake. Asset doesn't know which one is which. <laughs> <laughs> 
or or asset really just has a, a keen sense for for daddy jake somehow predicted that i'd be the one to start that joke this podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> So what do you have to say, Daddy Jake? Uh, you you got to call out asset here. Oh, that makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, the the thing that keeps popping into my head is I I can't remember where I heard this, but I know uh, I, I know our buddy David sent it to us too. But it was like a tweet or something like that where it said, "I don't like calling my cats fur babies because it implies that I am their skin daddy." <laughs> that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, asset. You are now Jake's fur baby. That one's going to the stand up routine I was talking about. By the way. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm starting off my stand up career uh, properly by stealing jokes. Yes, it, it, rite of passage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I'm ever going to be like you know the big leagues, like Carlos Mencia and Dane Cook and whoever else got <laughs> in trouble for stealing jokes and shit. <laughs> uh, all right, our final. Ranking on the Nagoya Bonds case, Mike Shira, 17 West. It is the return of his roundness, Chio Maru. He rises one rank after an eight and seven record from Jurio one. Uh, so my second crackpot theory that uh, ended up ruining the rest of my rankings was that somehow Chio Maru being ranked Jurio one East would grant him some sort of magical boost up the rankings. Uh, once again, based on tenuous at best, uh, speculous evidence uh, that really didn't add up to anything. I was just kind of grabbing for straws and I got one in my hand and I thought it meant something. It, it didn't. Um, so, I mean, there was some research there. I did some research based on like a Jurio one East Rixie with an eight, seven record uh, versus a Jurio six record or Jurio six Rixie with an 11 and four record. How do they typically line up on the following bonds? And it seemed like the Jurio one East Rixie, uh, would tend to be ahead of those Jurio 6 Rixie with 11 and 4 records, despite those Jurio 6 Rixie deserving to be a rank ahead of the Jurio 1 Rixie. Uh, it also seemed like if you looked at like a Magashir 13 or 14 Rixie with a 6 and 9 record, that the Jurio 1 Rixie with an 8 and 7 record would be ranked ahead of them on the next Bonds K. Uh, so I kind of took a look at that, all that past evidence and thought, yeah, that makes sense. We'll put Chiyomaru at Magashira 15 West ahead of Oho, Yutakiyama, Daimami, Nishikifu- yeah, Nishikifuji. Obviously, that didn't end up happening. What they instead did was uh, followed my two-rank rule and put uh, Chiyomaru behind all of them. Chiyomaru didn't deserve to be ahead of Daimami and Nishiki Fuji, they were both in Jurio, so those two ended up ahead of Chiyomaru. He also deserved to be the same exact rank as Oho and Yutakiyama when you do it by the math, and so he was not placed ahead of Oho and Yutakiyama because he wasn't deserving to be ranked two spots ahead of them. So in the future, we're going to ignore any uh, false magic that I might assign to one specific rank, and we're just instead going to follow that two-rank rule. That seems to be working pretty good. <laughs> if... If I had just followed that two rank rule and hadn't gotten a little crazy with my prediction, I would have gotten the final five Rixie exactly correct, and I would have won Guest of Bonds K for this Basho. By a lot, right? A uh, decent amount. I think the winning score was. I can look that up right now. Well, I mean, that's uh, what we're getting to next, anyways. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. Next, there's some interesting stuff going on in Jurio. We typically don't cover Jurio, uh, but we we talked about on the. Bonds K prediction episode. There were six guys in Jurio vying for four open spots in Makauchi. We were able to correctly predict the four guys that would come up in Chiyomaru, Tsudugisho, Daimami, and Nishiki Fuji. So the two guys that were left out were Ryuden and Hide no Umi. Ryuden was Jurio 3 West and had a 9 and 6 record. Hide no Umi was Jurio 1 West and had an 8 and 7 record. So Hide no Umi not making it up to Makauchi with an 8 and 7 record being Jurio 1 probably rubbed him the wrong way what really probably rubbed him the wrong way is that ryuden jumped over hide no umi to take the jurio one east spot which kept hide no umi at the jurio one west spot he did not receive any promotion of any kind uh for his eight and seven record and that's the first time that at least i've seen it where like they're he's not butting up against any sort of wall like getting into Sanyaku or anything like that. There wasn't a change in the number of Sanyaku Rikshi, which kind of alters the rankings in a weird way. Like if there's less people 
yeah, we already kind of went over that. Yeah. So there wasn't there wasn't anything weird like that. They just put Ryuden ahead of him, which I don't understand. Yeah, because it's not like it's not like Ryuden had like a massively better record. He had one win more. Yeah. So what the I, hell? Why? I don't I don't know why you don't just slide Hida and Umi over to Juria One East and put Ryuden at Juria One West. It was a choice and they went with it. I don't think it would have happened to somebody in Makauchi. I think they did it to Jurio because they don't care as much. That honestly, that's as good a reason as I can think of. So yeah, yeah. whatever. I mean, uh, there was I know John Gunning either had an article or I think it was an article where he talked about like the people that put all this time and effort into guessing what the Bonske are going to be put together much better Bonskes than what the actual Bonske committee do with a lot more logic and anything else. Mm-hmm. So. John Gunning would know a lot better than us how these bonds case are put together. Uh, and it seems like with not a lot of care. Uh, <laughs> so it could have been just like, whoops, <laughs> we forgot to promote Hide no Umi. It could have also been, eh, who cares? He's down in Jurio. Who's going to notice? Yeah, I, I think I've I've made this joke on several prediction ones where it's like you go on this long ass rant and I'm like, yeah, but maybe the reasoning is like, I don't know. I guess put him in front. <laughs> there was uh, something that I had seen from a long time ago where they said if they just got to a point where a bunch of people deserve to be the same rank, they just draw a name out of a hat or something like that. Uh, I don't know if I believe that because that would r- really make me sad. And I put so much time and effort into guessing what they're going to do. <laughs> if they're just drawing names out of hats, what's even the point of all this? Yeah. Um, but I got to say, they're consistent enough that i don't think that's what they're doing <laughs> yeah. they they have like they they just like keep one guess the bonds care uh in like a closet yeah <laughs> uh, to like consult slightly a little bit and then sometimes listen to him <laughs> it's just like they they listen to it specifically to find the thing that'll throw off everybody and guess the bonds k there it is yeah which actually in this bonds i don't know what that would be they Everybody did really good in Guess the Bounce K this time. This was a, a very easy Bounce K to predict, especially that middle section. Like I said, out of the top 37 Rikshi, I got uh, 33 exactly right and uh, only two not at their correct ranking. Uh, it was, I'm not saying that I'm not amazing and that I don't deserve kudos and credit for it. I absolutely do. No, that's of course a, that's I'm not a, saying that. a stunning accomplishment for any human to do. Uh, but there were just a few other humans that also did that. <laughs> uh, so we had four guys come up to the Makauchi division. That means uh, we say goodbye to four Rikshis, send them down to Jurio, those being Azumaru, Ishiura, Kotokuzan, and Kagayaki. So let's go over a little bit more in detail how I did on my prediction. So I got 33 exact right uh rank inside predictions out of a possible 42 that is 79 percent of getting the exact right rickshi in the exact right spot that's my new best uh best i've ever done um i also had four additional rickshi at the correct rank but on the wrong side so i had 37 total at the correct rank that is 88 percent of all rickshi i had at the correct rank and that ties my previous best of having 37 Rikshi at the correct rank. The best guess on Guess the Bonske had 38 Rikshi at the correct rank. So it was only one off from that. Uh, so the overall results and standings for this Basho, like I said, uh, my prediction was number five out of 155. Uh, and as we mentioned, Kaito, the number two guy on Guess the Bonske, uh, Leonard, the number uh, four guy on Guess the Bonske, Dolores Clem, uh, the number six guy on Guess the Bonske, beat them all. They're all a bunch of suckers. I'm going to be passing Kaito and Leonard in no time. They won't know what hit them. Well, I mean, you're advertising quite a bit what it is that is about to hit them. So I think they might know. It, and that's how amazing it is when they still won't know. Ah, wow. Yeah, that's pretty good then. <laughs> <laughs> really got him. <laughs> yep. And like I said, uh, number five uh, in the world at Guess the Bonds K. Uh, I think this is my third or fourth straight, I think third straight Basho ranked in the top 10. And uh, there's no signs of stopping. We're, we're riding this train all the way up to the top. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Of the people that 
are in the top four that I need to pass. There's a total combined seven uh, you show among them. So seven times they have won the guess the bonds K game. Uh, whereas I have zero, uh, but we'll get there. Keep, keep consistently getting uh, top five, top 10 scores. This is my third top 10 standing out of the past four boss shows. Uh, so uh, we've, we've been getting consistently a lot better at this very recently. Um, we also have a way uh, we're looking at it, just how far, if you add the cumulative amount of how far off I missed an individual Rikshi, what is the total amount that I missed by? Hey, and this boss another, uh, transition sound effect. <laughs> Yeah, that what was happened? not going to work. Uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't add the sound to it. I'll cut it out. Um, but I, uh, while well, on the fly here, I tried to make a new a new uh, image for us that shows a graph of what uh, Ryan's what Ryan's performance looks like. So if you're watching this on YouTube, pause it in three. <laughs> I hope you got that. <laughs> This, this is our, our, our first time messing with this program. Yeah, There's going to yeah, be no, a little bit of bumps in the road. I'm not very good at it yet. But <laughs> um, anyways, what, what, uh, that graph that you looked at and can no longer look at because you've unpaused. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a graph of, um, guess the bonds K is a subjective measurement for Ryan of how he's doing compared to everybody else. And so he's climbing that. But the, the graph that I wanted to show also shows how uh, he's getting better at it. Uh, from an objective standpoint as well. It's the, uh, the graph, Ryan, it's on your, on your spreadsheet. I, I know where it is. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at it. Um, but, uh, for... I'm the one who updated it. Of course I know where it is. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> but from an objective standpoint, Ryan had less than 0. 0.3 ranks off on average per wrestler. And that is, it ties his absolute fluke from 2019 um, <laughs> and his best ever. <laughs> and that, that is 100% an absolute fluke because yeah, I only like, by the way we measured it. Yeah. I missed the overall things by each Rixie by total of 12, yeah, um, so 12 total error ranks between yeah. the 42 guys. Yeah. But that was before I fully understood everything with the bonds K and like creating new Sanyaku slots. And so I had predicted uh, new Sanyaku slots to be made and it wasn't right. And so my guess the Bonds K ranking was absolutely horrid. And so I've been <laughs> wanting to replace that Basho as like my best one uh, by the way that we score it. And I finally am. So I can finally feel proud and point to, yes, that is my best Bonds K prediction yeah. because I don't have everybody off by like half a rank. Yeah. No, it's funny. Uh, it's your, your first, your, your worst one in the last year is the same as your second worst one of your first year. <laughs> so, or sorry, your second best one in your first year. So like yeah. the the 0. 0.83 error that you had in the previous tournament um was also like your second best in the first year of trying to do the bonds K. Yeah. So like the trend line is very very clearly in a downward direction. Um but yeah, there was that one where uh the the way that we score it, yeah, your 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 guess the bonds case score was terrible, but you had everybody in almost exactly the perfect order. The perfect order, yeah, just yeah. not at the right ranks. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. yeah, now that you know, now that we know more about it, that's definitely something that we need to account for in some way or other. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that that makes it extra cool that you know you you got you got this one while also not screwing up elsewhere. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the best of both worlds. Exactly. Um, my worst guess on this Bonds K, I was so close to having my worst guess just being a bunch of people off by half rank, but nope, missed Chiyomaru by a full two ranks. Uh, the overall stats, looking up who jumped up the highest, who fell the farthest, uh, the biggest jumps up the Bonds K, uh, Sada Naomi and Dayamami both rose up seven ranks, and the next highest jump was Nishiki Fuji, rising up six ranks. Our biggest drops down the Bonds K, uh, going down to the uh, Jurio Ishiura dropped 11 ranks uh, within Makauchi. Onosho dropped 10 ranks. And I think the next biggest drop within the Makauchi division was just five ranks. So it wasn't a very big 
there wasn't a whole lot of big moves uh, this Bonds K. A lot, a lot of eight and sevens, seven and eights, nine and six, six and nines. A lot, a lot of small moves in this one. We have three Rikshi that'll be at their career high ranking, those being Wakamoto Haru, Ichi Yamamoto, and Nishiki Fuji. Uh, we have one Rikshi that will be making their Makuchi debut, that being Nishiki Fuji. Uh, snub of the Bonds K, we had Kiribayama, Takanosho, Kotonawaka, Ichinojo, Tamawashi, Jake. I hadn't decided who should be snub of the Bonsuke. Who do you think out of those five guys, our top five Rikshi in the Maigashira ranks, which one do you think was most snubbed? I I would go for Kiribayama primarily because it's more the it's it's like two Basho in a row. Yeah. Uh, that's I, I that's that's kind of the tiebreaker for me that like, come on, just like why is everything why is that? Why why does the world not want him in the Sanyaku? <laughs> so, there's something going on. Yeah, that that's where I was landing as well. So I I will agree. Snub of the Bonds K. Kiti Bayama rising a total of three ranks after two consecutive ten and five Basho, and then our luck of the Bonds K. Fairly meager field this time. I had Chio Taidu and Mese uh, both being over promoted by two ranks. We had Midori Fuji being over promoted by two ranks, and Oho being under demoted by two ranks. Jake, anybody you want to? Uh, give the edge to yeah i'd say the luckiest one out there is leonard who is not yet been passed by his uh bonds k kohai uh, <laughs> because it is going to happen very soon damn straight it will be but no you're right kind of a meager field i don't i i don't really think anybody is all that lucky you know i'll go with oho yeah okay because the other three all had the same thing of being over promoted by two ranks. Oho was the only guy under demoted by two ranks. So he's special and a unicorn on this bonds case. So he gets the award. Therefore yes. We pick him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jake, we always, you always try to predict what my, I always force you to predict what you think my worst <laughs> guess will be. Uh, and as I'm getting better at this, it's getting harder for you to figure out. Uh, you mostly got annoyed at me because it took me a very long time and a lot of explanation uh, for me to figure out what my Magashira 15 Rikshi were going to be. So just to spite me, you said I was going to get both of those wrong. Yeah. Uh, I got one right in Ono oh Show. Uh, Chiyomaru was wrong. So uh, kind of a, a situation where we're 50-50 on that one. Partial credit. Uh, I'm going to take it as a win just because of spite. I'll allow it. So... If you enjoy this podcast, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. Feel free to leave us a five-star review. Hey, we put some effort into YouTube. We deserve it. Yeah, and next time it might work. <laughs> the- yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, just because it worked for 99.5% of the episode doesn't mean it's a success. So, <laughs> <laughs> Also doesn't mean you should drop us a star in your review. I maybe half a star, but yeah, you're right. You should definitely <laughs> keep giving high, high reviews uh, because I don't know why every YouTuber asks for it. So it must be something yeah. for us, right? We honestly, we only do it because that's like, that's what you do. Yeah, you, of course you say when you, li- when you listen to podcasts, they're like, oh yeah, rate and review us. Leave us a five star review. And you have to tell people listening to your podcast where to find the thing that they're already listening to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's how it works, okay? <laughs> Yeah, we don't like it any more than you do. It's just <laughs> one, once you're a content creator, there's just a calling that you hear in the back of your head that you just you have to do it. You have to put it out there. It's part of the manual that they send you. Um, <laughs> I can hear my wife laughing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I think also it's have to tell you this on social media because you can't just freaking Google it and see what pops up. Right. Well, that's what Flair tells them to do every episode. Just. Google us. We're on Twitter, Google Facebook, it, yeah. blog. Just Google it. You'll find us. Like the fifty eighth minute of this. Of, the, of <laughs> damn it! And I tried to keep it short. <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I'm yelling, and my baby's upstairs sleeping. Let's check the Riley monitor. Eight oh five six one three sumo is eight oh five six one three seven eight six six. That's kind of the only part that isn't like stupid obvious so i guess call us on that or whatever i don't care yeah. leave us a voicemail we're not going to pick up and answer it but you can leave us a voicemail and if you do we'll probably oh, play yeah yeah we, we should probably say that more often like heaven heavens no we're not going to pick up the <laughs> phone like <laughs> there isn't actually a phone for us to pick up we wouldn't dare ask you to like talk to a person on the phone <laughs> yeah we're Lord we're millennials we understand that anxiety we feel it too we're not going to pick up the phone if we don't recognize the number calling yeah. us I, I if mean, it doesn't for, come for up God with a sakes, name, we don't answer. Yeah, and, and and for God's sakes, you can even text that automated line. Just do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's much better. 
Actually, that's not true. I, if you call me, I always answer. I don't care if your number comes up or not. Oh, Ryan, how many? It might. You never know. Somebody might be offering me a thousand dollars. What if they're a Nigerian prince? <laughs> uh, what about your car's extended warranty? Have you have you uh, checked in about that? Like fifty times, yes. <laughs> I just keep giving them my credit card number. And it doesn't help. <laughs> I keep calling. I don't know if they just keep entering it wrong or what, but I'll give it to them next time if they call. I'm going to stop recording now, okay? No, no. Uh, Nagoya preview is going to come out next week, and the Basha starts Sunday, July 10th. Thank you for listening this far. We don't deserve it. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. That's going to be my new my new sign like off instead sign of off. instead of Jake hit the stop record button. It's going to be thanks for listening this far. We don't deserve it. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.